Right, so a question that seems to come up quite a lot is, when I'm riding down a hill like this, on my bike, this is an S-Works Tarmac, hope you can recognise that, at what point does it make sense to stop pedalling and adopt a tuck position? Uh, at what point am I going to be going faster for the least effort? So, what we need to do first of all is establish what the slope angle is. And when we talk about 6% slopes, for example, uh, it doesn't mean that the angle is 6 degrees. What it means is, is that you're going up or down 6 meters for every 100 meters along. Um, so, a bit of basic trigonometry, um, tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Uh, so inverse tan 0 0.06 and what it comes out as is 3.43 degrees. So when you're going down this slope, obviously you have, we're going to look at the two main forces against you, which are gravity, which is acting down on you like this, and wind resistance, which is acting against you like this. We're going to ignore um, things like tyre, rolling resistance and losses in the chain and stuff just to keep it a bit more simple. So the first step is to work out the gravity force. Now the gravity force is a function of your mass times the gravity constant times the sine of the angle of the slope. The other force which is in play here is the drag force, we call that FD, this one was FG, uh, and this is a half rho, which is the density of air, times your drag factor, times your area, times your velocity squared. Now, <clears throat> if these two forces are in equilibrium, then, i.e. equal, then your, um, uh, your speed will be constant. You will be going at a, at a constant speed. You need one of these to be greater than the other to be, to be accelerating or decelerating. So we're gonna match these up and look at varying some of these values and see uh, at what point it makes sense to to what we're doing basically is changing your, your CDA. If, you, if we look at um, the CDA is, this is just your drag coefficient, which is a function of how slippery a shape you have, you have adopted. And this is your surface area that you present to the wind. And for simplicity, we'll just combine them as CDA. And various studies have been done and it's kind of generally accepted that a good aero position in the, in the drops is approximately 0.3 and if you are getting into a really super aero tuck getting right down chest on the stem tucking your knees and elbows in you're know, really getting as streamlined as possible you're going to be down potentially as low as 0.2 but perhaps more realistically something like 0.23 let's say so obviously a big reduction not only are you reducing your area when you're coming down like that but you're also improving your cd so the overall effect is to bring this figure down significantly right so let's plug some figures into these two equations and see what pops out now let's use a mass of 70 kilos that's the bike and the rider um, G gravity constant is 9.806. Uh, we know the angle is 6 degrees. We are going to be using a density of air to be um, 1.2. And if we use the initial figure of 0.3, this one here, uh, using the spreadsheet that I created, these forces will be in equilibrium at a speed of 54.36 kilometers an hour. 
which is kind of about right if you think about it. If you're freewheeling down a 6% slope in a nice, aero, fairly aero position on the drops, and you're taking away any rolling resistance, then that's roughly the kind of speed you would, you would expect. Now, if we plug the same figures in for the ultra aero position, the point two, using this one here, the 0.23 CDA, then the figure which pops out is 62.1 kilometers per hour. So obviously a significant difference. That's, that's what you would expect. You get into a nice aero tuck and you're gonna go that little bit faster. Um, now what we're gonna do now is uh, adjust these equations for power and see how much power you need to add to be able to achieve the same result as getting into that aero tuck. Right, so adjust, to adjust these formulae for, for power, to turn this into a PG and a, and a PD, we just need to, basically, uh, power is a measure of the, the work being done over the amount of time it takes to do that work. So if we include um, the velocity here, that's meters per second, which then gives you a figure in, joule, in uh, joules per second, which is, which is watts. And we know that the power figure for drag is simply cubed here. So again, these two forces in equilibrium, sorry, these two powers in equilibrium, um, will provide you with a constant speed. And we can then add on extra power from pedaling and see what, what effect that has. Right, so again, plugging the various figures in, the rider, just in the drops, with his CDA of 0.3, how much power does he have to add to achieve the same speed as the guy in the super aero tuck? Well, if you plug in all these figures, and uh, again, using the spreadsheet that I've created, just, just using these formulae here, uh, the answer is 214 watts which is not insignificant. So basically, you imagine you've got two riders side by side. One is in a super tuck position, as aero as he can possibly be. He's not expending any energy at all other than just maintaining that position. Whereas the guy in the drops, to keep up with him, is having to provide 214 watts to uh, basically overcome his worse aero position. Now that's quite a significant number, it's not, uh, it's not negligible, that's pedalling fairly hard. Um, and obviously, you know, who's going to be the freshest when they arrive at the bottom of the hill? I'm betting on the, uh, on the 0.23 guy. Just to do one more example, um, if we use perhaps a slightly more realistic super tuck value of 0.26 instead of 0.23, so it's not quite as extreme. Um, it's fairly achievable, I would say, if you're if you if you're for fairly aero generally. Then this two hundred fourteen watt figure drops to one hundred watts. So perhaps a more realistic, real world example would be something like that. This is for a speed of fifty eight kilometers an hour. So you can see that that's uh, not too hard pedaling. Um, just a fairly easy rate of pedaling would allow you to keep up with the guy in the, in the extra tuck position, albeit not like a super tuck. And it really depends how, what we're talking here, are we talking real Superman or just literally uh, head right down kind of thing? I mean, it, it's gonna vary quite a bit depending on, on, on the actual position that you, that you adopt. But um, yeah, I mean, going from 0.3 to 0.26 is reasonable. And, uh, and that's the kind of figure that, that comes out. Okay, just one more example. If the slope becomes 8%, obviously the speeds are gonna increase. And the, the guy in the, in the super tuck, 0.26, um, is gonna be doing 67.4 kilometers per hour. And the 0.3 guy, to achieve the same speed has to add 156 watts. Right, here's another interesting one. If the unaero 0.3 rider wants to equal 
the speed of the of the aero rider without pedaling he has to increase his weight up to 80.7 kilos from 70 which was our our starting basis so he has to add another 10.7 kilos of uh, gravity force basically to be able to achieve this speed without pedaling so anyone that is slightly on the heavier side you can rejoice in the fact that gravity is helping you go downhill.